Hey everybody, it's Busy Little Bee. Welcome back to my channel. Yes, it's another Amberlynn video. So I caught up on Breezer's streams because she did three in one day yesterday in a 12 hour period. Um, nothing to report, nothing interesting at all. She is being the same petty 16 year old that she always is. She is um, making herself feel better by watching foodie and comparing herself. The only real update I have on just bitch in a day is um, that she took me and others talking about her re-uploading that child's trauma. She took that as we don't want her to cover CA and we don't want her exposing this terrible mom. That's not the case. If she would use her little brain and she would look on Twitter, she would see that I was defending her calling CPS, her encouraging others to call CPS after they had witnessed that abuse on camera. So no one was saying, don't cover it, don't expose it, don't report it. We didn't want her re-uploading a child's trauma to the internet, which is what she did, which is what she kept trying to do and she saw that it wasn't working out real well for her. People were catching on to her bullshit. But you know Breezy, she's got to show you the worst people on the internet so she can feel better about herself. <laughs> Moving on. Amber, this girl is causing all kinds of drama. <laughs> so she finally sat down to do a pretty long Q&A. And... <laughs> There are some interesting little nuggets in it. So we're going to take a look at some of these clips and I'm going to share my thoughts with you. And I'd like you to share your thoughts with me down in the comments. Let's get started. Does your mom remember how she found out you were gay and can she share her version slash side of the story? So that's actually something that me and my mom have recently talked about because um, we like to reminisce. We talk about the hard stuff, the fun stuff, like just things that we experienced together as mother and daughter when we were younger. And that is a topic that has come up. And I actually have asked her, I was like, mom, do you want to share your side? Because I've actually gotten people asking this before. She said she would, but she doesn't want to like physically be on camera right now. So I think it would just be like her voice or something. But I think that'd be fun to like hear the mother's side to a coming out story. I think a lot of people could actually use that. I know there are a lot of people watching me who have not come out to their parents or just like anyone in their life in general. And I think that like the more exposure you have of coming out stories can actually make it seem less scary. Okay, so this clip bugged me because I don't know how many of you watch Mr. Snowflake, but in his interview with Casey, Casey told Mr. Snowflake his own coming out story. And it was the exact same coming out story that Amber had told her audience about herself. Like she took Casey's coming out story and transposed it onto herself and her own life. So I think it would be very interesting to hear Mama Lynn's recollection of this, especially considering number one, Amber has told us her own memory is shitty. But number two, Mama Lynn was back then using substances. So I'm sure her memory was not great. I honestly don't think she would do it. I don't think it's coming. Don't count on it. Because honestly, I truly believe that Amber took Casey's coming out story. In my opinion, that's exactly what happened. And if you don't believe me, uh, just watch Mr. Snowflake's interview with Casey. I believe it was in the victims of a narcissist series check that out because that shows exactly the clips that show amber took casey's coming out story and made it her own i cut my own hair and it already feels so much better not only that but i haven't used heat on my hair i also said goodbye tresemme and i have moved on to a different shampoo and conditioner and i just i notice already how much better my hair looks. So here I am showing you a clip of my hair from my last vlog, and then I'm showing you my hair today, 
where no it's not perfect but it just looks and feels so much healthier i am very glad that i decided to take a pair of kitchen scissors and just chop 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 Do you think living in oklahoma will allow you to grow or no oh absolutely because it has already allowed me to grow this is the most independent i have ever been in my whole entire life Amber, we saw your mom doing your laundry for you at the laundromat, bro. Stop. <laughs> You're 33. That's not independent, ma'am. Just because you live on your own does not mean you are independent. I know it's more independent than you have ever been, and I'm glad. I'm, I love to see it. I would love to see you doing your own laundry, too. That would be cool. The question is, what is the worst habit that you do when you're in love with someone? So not only do I have BPD, but I have massive, massive anxious attachment issues. Like it is so freaking bad. But when I'm in love with someone, they become my everything. And I know it's because of the BPD. I know it's because of the anxious attachment. So it gets so bad. It's to the point where it's like my emotions, my feelings, my thoughts, the way my day goes, etc., etc is all based on the way that they are treating me. Now that I know the reason, it's like, wow, I have BPD. That's why I'm doing this. Like, I know this isn't normal. I know this isn't rational. Having that answer has helped me so much. Like, you guys have no idea how empowering it is to have an answer. Amber, here's a little friendly advice from woman to woman, adult to adult. Your mental health and your personality disorders, your issues, are solely yours to fix. I really hope you work on fixing these things as BPD can be managed with talk therapy. Um, you can work out your attachment issues in therapy. We heard that you are getting an accountant in Oklahoma before you moved there. You made sure. Did you ever consider maybe getting established with a therapist in Oklahoma? Because that's going to be highly important to you healing and not harming the people around you over and over and over again. Knowing that you have this disorder is not the answer. The answer is fixing how you operate. Who is your favorite ex? I'm gonna say Feline. Is wifey number one the same as wifey number two? Wifey number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are all the same person. Just so we're all clear here, she lied to her audience for two years about this and constantly gaslit us and told us that we were crazy and all kinds of stuff when we would confront her with, you know, it's the same wifey, it's the same person. And it is the same person that you moved in while Beck was still living with you. No matter how many times you deny that, it's still true. It's all on video. It's all on your channel. <laughs> but with a lot of these answers, she went on to elaborate and explain, especially when it was, you know, asking about her love life. And But this one, nice, quick, to the point, yep, it's all the same person. And then she moved on to talk about Nikocado Avocado. No word salad around all that because she finally told the truth. This girl likes her word salad. She likes to fluff her lies. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm glad she finally told the truth about that now that it doesn't matter anymore. We all knew what the truth was. She's the last one to say it is all. How many times have you ordered takeout in March and what was it? So today is actually March 12th and I've only ordered takeout three times. So I'm actually very proud of that. Like, round of applause. I noticed that a lot of the reaction channels, they don't like to talk about the other reaction channels. And if they do, it's always like good things, but it's like, y'all, these reaction channels, they're not perfect. They do and say wrong things as well because we are humans. That is just how we're programmed. All right, which one of you bitches is pretending to be perfect? I need to know for this, she was talking about Yo Mama. And that's her favorite reaction channel because reaction channels don't really go after reaction channels. Apparently, she's not known about Creator Wars 2024 where Yaba and Sam are going after Gigi and saying awful things about his mother. Or, I don't know, I guess she hasn't seen my channel talking about Breezy and her bullshit, huh? <laughs> 
this happens a lot. <laughs> I have been interviewed for a few weight loss shows and it always goes really good. They like hype me up and they make me feel really good, but they never call me back. They never even tell me, sorry, we didn't choose you. It's just like, there's nothing. Um, you're just a troll. What is your next goal weight since you have reached your recent goal of 499 pounds? I think my next one is 469 because from my remembrance, that is the lowest I remember weighing in a very long time. Years, probably like seven years, maybe more. Well, my surgeon was Dr. Smith, um, the same surgeon who did Tammy Slayton surgery. What really happened during the weight loss surgery era? Okay, I specifically said repeatedly during that whole era, I will explain later. You guys will see why I'm upset later. I can't tell you now, but I'll tell you later. Later is here and I'm just gonna do it short and quick and to the point. I could easily do a whole story time, but I'm just not gonna even do that because I'm, I'm not gonna put my energy into this that hardcore because I just don't want to. I did back then. My energy was very much into this back then. I was very upset. So let's get into it. So if you guys remember, I came on my YouTube and I said, oh, I can't get weight loss surgery until I don't binge for a whole year. It came out of nowhere. It was confusing. It was weird. It made no sense. But I held on to that and I said, okay, let's do it. Then I had an appointment with my dietitian and she said, you're gonna come meet the surgeon because we need to talk to you about something. And this was before I was even supposed to meet the surgeon. Sorry, I itched right here, so that's why I'm super red and I just now noticed. My skin be sensitive. So anyways, I was gonna meet the surgeon even before I was supposed to. So long story short, hundreds and hundreds of people were emailing my surgeon, finding his Instagram and messaging him. They were contacting my surgeon's office through the phone, through messages, any way that people could contact my surgeon, they were finding it and they were doing it. So how did people find out who my surgeon was? A reaction channel. How did that reaction channel find out who my surgeon was? Because I read maybe two sentences of an email that was sent to me by my surgeon's office. This reactor wanted to know so badly who my surgeon was that they faked wanting to get weight loss surgery just so they could get that email back to them to confirm who my weight loss surgeon was. And once they confirmed who my weight loss surgeon was, what did they do? They doxed him. Uh, she said it was the narc alert who supposedly doxed Dr. Smith. And this is the narc alert's response. So on Saturday, Miss Merck will be streaming and she will be coming with receipts. So if you'd like to check it out, you know how to find the channel. Someone gather up Breezy and Amberlynn so we can have a discussion about what doxing is. <laughs> you cannot dox a famous doctor who is known for doing weight loss surgery. Everyone knows that doctor's name and that he's a weight loss surgeon. I don't know if what you're saying about that reaction channel is true or not. I'm sure weirdos contact people because people have no lives and I do not think that's okay. But this very famous weight loss surgeon is known as a weight loss surgeon. Saying he's a weight loss surgeon is not doxing him. You were the one who said that you had a famous surgeon. We got to have a whole class on what constitutes doxing. Oh, so that's not the reason why I didn't end up getting weight loss surgery because I was still going through with it. Like Dr. Smith is so freaking amazing. Like he was so sweet, such a gentleman. He was rooting for me through and through. Like I wish more than anything, if I ever want weight loss surgery again, that he will be the surgeon because it's just like, he is incredible. I ultimately did not get weight loss surgery because I didn't feel ready. I, I didn't, I genuinely didn't. I didn't feel like I had the support that I needed because me and my ex, my now ex, 
we were just going through a lot at the time and it was super expensive, like $35,000. Like it was just like a lot of different things that were causing me to be like, this is not the right choice right now. So that was Amber Lynn's Q&A. She ended it with a really gross reference to her sex life that I did not want to hear about. And I'm sure you don't want to hear about. So I didn't include it. <laughs> I will see you guys next time. I have no idea what video is coming next, to be honest with you. So just keep an eye out and I will be uploading very, very soon. Thanks for watching. It's a nice lady called Busy Little B. It's a, a nice channel. Busy Little B, subscribe. That is Queen B. Busy Little B, subscribe to Busy Little B's channel. Well, Busy Little B. Good night, Busy Little B. Shun